everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. Today I have a super quick video that will build off of the panty block series that I did last year. We're going to be using our basic panty block to turn it into a thong. If you still need to make your basic panty block, I've linked the video up in the iCards above here. For this tutorial, you're going to need three pattern pieces, your back piece, your front piece, and your gusset. I would suggest that if you're going to make a thong, I would start out with something that's a little bit lower than uh, your natural waist. So in my instance, I'm starting out with my hipster block, but if you have like a mid-rise or hipster, that one should work fine. So the first things we need to do is locate all three of our pattern pieces, and then you should probably iron them, but I'm going to skip that step for now. You want to align them into a straight line across the bottom. So the center back seam of your panty should be a straight line if you use that tutorial, as will the center front seam because both of these are cut on the fold. And then for the gusset, you should have a center seam mark or center line marked down your gusset. So you want to overlap your seam allowances. That is, we have a quarter of an inch or whatever you've added onto this and the quarter inch added onto this. You want to make sure you're overlapping at the actual sewn line itself. So as if the garment has been sewn up and do that in the front and the back. Once you've got all three of your pattern pieces lined up in a straight line, I'm going to go ahead and copy that over onto another sheet of paper. So here you can see I've done just that. If I overlay those previous pieces on top, you can see where they fit in exactly along that line, like so. The reason I try to copy these over all in one continuous piece is it helps me visualize things just a little bit easier. Now we need to draw in our new cut lines for the thong pattern. In this case, it's useful to have a variety of curved rulers just to help you make nice uh, sweeping motions, but you can also do it freehand as well. I like to work on half of the pattern at once, even with the gusset piece itself, because you can always double it up into the full pattern size and now you'll know it'll be symmetrical. So I'm working with our thong. Let's start at the back pattern piece first because that's going to be where the most changes are made and then we can work our way towards the front. So when you see this line here, which is where the back piece attaches to the gusset, that's really where you want to make it the thinnest possible. Now, how thin do you want to make your thong? Well, a lot of this depends on the type of elastic you're going to finish with. I would say at a minimum, you want to give yourself at least a half of an inch. So I'm going to be using fold over elastic on my finished piece. It's one of my favorite elastics to use for underwear because I don't have to worry about adding seam allowances or anything like that. And certainly in something like a thong where it's, you know, going in places that are a little bit more sensitive, uh, Pico elastic with its bumpy edges might not be as appropriate. So when we're working with fold over elastic, you know, it, it, as the name implies, it folds over in half like this. And so at a minimum, we need to make sure that we have enough fabric that we can fold over each side of that narrow gusset piece with the elastic and not have the elastic overlapping on each other. Because if it overlaps, it starts getting a little bit bulky and that can, again, get kind of uncomfortable. So the standard fold over elastic width is 5 8 um, so technically this is a little bit wider than a quarter of an inch, but I'm going to go ahead and say it's a quarter of an inch once folded. So that means on my, my gusset arc right here at the bottom where the back connects to the gusset, I want to make sure that at a minimum, I am just a little bit over a quarter of an inch. I want to give myself a little bit extra. So I'm going to go with three eighths of an inch wide. So I'm just going to do little tick mark there at 3 eighths of an inch from that folded edge or straight line edge that we have running down the center. Now we just need to uh, sort of move up, up and then arc out to form your leg hole. Now you could, I'm sure there are mathematical ways that you could do this, uh, but I just kind of like to freehand and I think that's worked out pretty well for me so far. So I'm just going to sort of go up at this particular juncture, I think going out kind of straight is the best option. And then once we sort of clear that anatomy, that then we can start branching out and forming 
the leg hole like so. So you saw I just sort of like freehanded this in based on what I thought looked good. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to freehand in art, but I think it's quite easy. One thing you should, I always try to remember is placing like the, the bone of my wrist on the piece of paper and then using that as sort of my fulcrum point to go ahead and make nice smooth curves rather than trying to draw it in by hand. So once you get it in, I'm thinking that it looks like I have a little bit too much material there. It might be a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm just going to sort of sketch in this to be a little bit more severe. like that. So I think that looks a little bit better for me. So that's going to go ahead and be my back piece like this. <laughs> and it's completely okay if you go in a couple times, do a couple lines. You just want to make sure you get something that you're happy with. And if you already have a pair of thong underwear that you really like and you think is comfortable, this is a good opportunity to sort of look at that and, and judge from that what it is you need to do on here. But I'm a big fan of, you know, trying something out, sewing it up, seeing if it works, and if it doesn't, moving on. So that's what I'm gonna do for the back. Um, one thing I need to take note of is the length of my side seam at the back now. So it's at, with my new sort of style I'm placed into there, my back side seam is about one and a half inches. So I'm gonna need that later on down the road once we do the front section. So now that we've finished the back, let's go ahead and move on to the gusset itself. So obviously we know we need to attach the gusset here where the back attaches. I like to bring myself out to the full width of the gusset in the front because I know that's already pretty comfortable um, based on the draft of this pattern. So all I need to do for the gusset is draw in a new one that connects to the back where we have that narrowed in spot to the full width of the gusset on the front. This is one that makes having this one I find having a curved ruler floor is really helpful for getting a really nice shape. So now we've drawn in that. So this is no longer needed, this, this, all of those pieces are gonna go away once we copy over our new pattern. And then the last thing we need to do is work on our front. So remember when we measured the side seam in the back, we found that the side seam was one and a half inches. So we need to make sure that our front has the same length of side seam because when the front attaches to the back, we need to make sure they are the same length long. And I took, so I'm just gonna measure down my one and a half inches from the top here so that I know where my landing point is. So we have my landing point there which is gonna to connect to the landing point here. So this one is going to be a really nice curve. Let's see, again, trying, trying around different things just to see if I can find something that I like the way it looks. And this looks pretty good. So there's gonna be our new front piece. Now that we've got all of those style lines sketched out, we can go ahead and break them out into the three separate components again, using another piece of paper. So now we have the front piece copied over. Uh, we know that we want to connect the front piece to the gusset, so that's a fabric to fabric connection. So we want to make sure and add our seam allowances in there. So I'm just adding in a quarter of an inch as my standard seam allowance. And then of course you need to think about where everything else is going to be covered. So this center front seam here, whoops. The center front seam here is going to be cut on the fold. So it's gonna be one single piece. So we don't need to add any seam allowance there. Uh, and then we have the waistline and the leg hole. 
and you need to think about what sort of elastics you're gonna use. As I had mentioned, I think for the leg hole, foldover elastic is by far the most comfortable and easiest. If you're using foldover elastic, you don't need to add any seam allowance. If you want to use something like Pico elastic, you need to add a seam allowance equal to the width of the Pico. So if you're working with 3 8 of an inch Pico, you wanna add 3 8 of an inch extra onto the side where that elastic's going to be applied. In my case, I'm going fold over all the way, so the only seam allowances I need to make are at the side seam and the gusset seam. So here is the finished pattern piece for our front thong. Now moving along to the gusset piece. So now we have the gusset piece copied over and just like we did for the front, we need to think about where we're looking at fabric to fabric connections. Of course, it's going to connect to the back down here. So I'm gonna add a quarter of an inch there and it's gonna to connect to the front up here. So let's go ahead and add a quarter of an inch there. Um, this is going to be cut on the fold. I'm actually gonna go ahead and double this pattern piece up so I have a single pattern piece again, not one that cuts on the fold. Just because this one is so narrow, it would get a little bit problematic. And then this curved edge here, of course, is a part of the leg hole seam. And we're gonna finish that one off and fold over elastic, which means no seam allowance is needed. And then lastly, we're gonna copy off Our front pattern, our back pattern piece. Now this curved edge here, of course, is our leg opening. That's going to be using fold over elastic, so no seam allowance needed. The side seam on here should equal in length to the side seam of the front one over here. We already had seam allowances on the block to start out with, so we don't need to add any more. The only place we need to add seam allowance is just, let's see, right down here at the very bottom where the back will be connecting to the gusset. With my patterns, I like to demark what pattern it is, so the thong, and then I also like to demark what's the waist and what's the leg, because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing to tell looking at triangle pattern pieces once everything's cut out. So now I have all of my pattern pieces cut out. Of course, the front and back were cut out on the fold. And then I have my two gusset pieces, one in my main fabric and one in a cotton lining. Now it's important to note that you should be using fabric that is equivalent and stretched to the block you've drafted for. In my case, my block has been drafted for 50% stretch and I'm using a power net fabric that has about 50% stretch as well. So let's get into construction. So these are going to be constructed very similarly to a typical panty pattern. It's just other pieces are a little bit smaller. So let's start with our front piece. I'm going to take the front piece sitting right sides up and connect that with my fashion gusset sitting right sides up and go ahead and pin that into place. Then we turn it around to the other side. Now we should have the wrong side of our front facing up. And we're gonna go ahead and put our lining in and just pin it along that same edge, making sure you're going through all three layers of fabric. Now what I'm gonna do is fold the lining out of the way. I'm going to roll up my front piece so that it is out of the way. And I can grab my back piece of fabric. Now, especially on thongs, I find it really difficult to see which piece is what. So make sure you look at it and you figure out, okay, this is where the gusset's gonna attach over here and these are for the legs. So we wanna have the right side of our back touching the right side of our gusset piece and pin that into place. Of course, this one is super narrow, so there's not gonna be much to pin. And bring back the interior gusset piece around and pin that into place. You should have three layers of fabric here. So basically you have your internal gusset sitting on the outside on one side and the external gusset sitting on the outside on the other and then your front and back pieces are sort of shoved in between those two gussets. We're gonna take this over to the machine and sew it with a zigzag stitch at a quarter of an inch or whatever you've drafted your seam allowance to be along both of those pinned edges. 
So now we've sewn along that edge and that edge of our gusset, we can go ahead and flip everything out to the right side. So we should have a piece where you have your front, you have your fully encased seams on either side of the gusset, and then your back. Next, we're gonna take this over and connect it right sides together, your front and your back piece along your side seams. So we're just going to run, I think I'm gonna run a straight stitch here at a quarter of an inch because that's what I've drafted my pattern to be. With the side seams completed, the last and final step is of course to finish everything with your chosen elastic. And now we have a finished pair of thong. If you need a refresher course on how to apply different types of elastics, I've linked up a video in the iCards above where I go over various forms of elastic application. I hope everyone has found this tutorial on making your own self-drafted thong useful. I'd love to see how everyone else uses this pattern by using the hashtag LizSews on Instagram. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below. It really helps me out. I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.